So to continue um, Liam's theme, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do live after them, the good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honourable man. So are they all, all honourable men. Come I to speak at Caesar's funeral. I studied um, Julius Caesar in school, so it's a good thing I'm not here as an actor or as an um, uh, author. We're here to talk about formatting from XML. So for the purposes of today, I've taken the XML for um, Julius Caesar and turned it into multiple formats so we can compare and contrast different approaches. From the TEI XML, we're going to show you um, PDF produced using FO, CSS, and also speed data, and uh, also where it differs from produced using uh, XHTML. So since we're talking about XML, this is the XML for Julius Caesar. Being TEI, it's very verbose and semantic more than your so semantic HTML would be. Uh, so it's down the bottom here is the start of the text. Hence home, you idle, get you home. Uh, here's the same, the, the first page of Julius Caesar, uh, the original and formatted with XSLFO. And as it often happens, if I include vendor extensions, I get things like the column rule down the middle. By way of comparison, Patrick ran up one with Speed Data Publisher. So we can do reasonable facsimiles of um, Julius Caesar with a bit of extra work. We could probably get even closer. Uh, as Liam points out, we can do much the same thing with CSS. But, I mean, you're probably glazing over at this point. They all look like Julius Caesar. So we're going to narrow in a bit and use the example of how do we format a initial capital, or the so-called drop caps. I mean, back in 1624 or whatever it was, the printer would have got the big H and stuck it there, and he would have got the smaller letters and put them in, and it would have happened. If you're in the 1950s, you're trying to find out what to do. You'd buy a book and have several pages of examples on, on what to do. And again, it'd be a manual process. In the, in the 80s, that's the start of um, computer typesetting, but still a fairly manual process. The designer would say exactly what to do. And to, to do this with cold metal, you'd have to take a chisel to the capital G to be able to get the text in that tightly. By the mid-90s, it's more of a boutique thing, and you think that typesetting and typography begins and ends with elements of typographical style. There's things here that even um, that we would find hard to do automatically things like optically aligning the V there so it um, juts out into the margin rather than leaving a big white space if it was indented into the margin, into the body of the text. But we're doing XML, so the first thing you think of with XML is XSLFO. So you go to the specs and you find in the draft for XSLFO 2.0 that we're defining properties for um, drop capitals to handle some of these things, some of the alignment, some of the moving the text around away from the, uh, the drop capital, et cetera, which is very all well and good until you look a bit more closely and you look up the XPPL working group and you find that it's no longer active because of insufficient participation. It didn't have its charter renewed because there weren't enough people active in the, in the thing. This first excerpt is from the previous charter, 
where the best that we thought we could find was we'd say we had to have a minimum of six people. And the sort of minimum we thought we could depend on people to do was two hours a week. If you contrast that with the uh, current draft charter for the CSS working group, their minimum is 10 active participants and their expectation that each of those will be funded to work one day a week on CSS at least. And their expectation is that their editors will be funded to work two days a week on that. So compare the resources available to the, the two working groups. Uh, which led, this is from a 19, uh, 2012 um, CSS face-to-face -face minutes. Well, the, Inference. The statement is that CSS is clearly and decisively won on the web. So, in many respects, that's true. But uh, this is from a, an email last year on the XSL list from an XSLFO vendor, who quite confidently states that things are fine because he's um, done all these things and he knows that. Uh, a lot of that was done with XSLFO. So it's not so much that um, XSLFO is dead, it's not just not visible to um, the people. I mean, on the web, it's the developers who are sort of the king makers and they say what's hot and what's not, but the FO vendors have gone and taken the toys and gone somewhere else. I was asked at lunch quite by accident, are there any FO vendors anymore? Um, so I did a search on WWXSLFO, which is W3C's mailing list for XSLFO, for last year, and I found exactly one. Um, I'd actually done my homework before this. I wasn't going to put this slide in. And I looked on the websites of all the vendors that I knew of, and I found that these, uh, these are the months in which these vendors have advertised new products on their own websites. So they're, they're active. They're happy but they're not visible to us and we're not visible to them. So if there's no working group, what's next? There's a community group, which I happen to be the chair of. Um, it has a, that's the group description, and I was a bit remiss on Friday about advertising this, but anybody can join and you don't need to be an expert. So this is sort of the next best place for XSLFO. We did a survey just last month about what we should do. And it's interesting that the people outside the group thought the most important thing we should talk about was XSLFO. The most important thing we should do is develop a new specification. And the most important specification we could do would be XSLFO 2.0. This is people who sort of are projecting that there shouldn't be an XSLFO 2.0. But amongst the members that we have, we weren't so strong on focusing straight on XSLFO. Um, we weren't so strong on developing specifications. And we weren't even strong on, if we do develop a specification, should it be XSLFO 2.0? Because as a community group, again, without the people tasked to work on it, we don't have the resources to push forward a complete specification. So. In the absence of an XSLFO 2.0, what can you do? You fall back to what you do with 1.1, which way you would make a float for the capital H. So this is a some of the XSLT that produced the FO that you that made the page that you saw. And as you can see, I was able to float the H, and because I have XSLT, I can do what I like with the XML, I was able to make a nice capital E to more closely mimic the first folio. Uh, but floats aren't very good. Uh, perhaps if we had a better specification that it was implemented, we'd be able to do drop caps uh, by something other than faking the floats. So, FO, if we, we, we will also look at doing the same thing with CSS. And in CSS 2.1, the technique is exactly the same, to make a float and float it across. And 
Um, because the other interesting part about the text is the same as what you'd have to say about FO. As it sounds up there, it will span about so many lines. You don't have that much control over the presentation. So if I was going to, I'd try, this is formatting the TEI with CSS. I could do the float trick the same. I don't have a CSS selector that's going to let, get me that single letter out of the, um, the rest of the word. So I have a, uh, a minor difference. It illustrates the, the difference in what you can do with the CSS selectors versus XPath. To make the HTML that I processed, um, I use the stock standard TI style sheets, which produces lots of divs. And I used the same CSS when I printed it. It was very good because every speaker came out with a drop capital letter. It was like W's and T's and H's all through the page. So I had to modify my HTML to add an extra class so I could select on that. Potentially, if the formatter um, implemented something still very much a working draft in CSS, I could do better with selecting it, but I still don't have a mechanism for getting to my poor orphan E. So CSS post 2.1, just last week the WW style had a, another thread about there is no CSS3, it's just sort of the stop motion standard where um, specifications get produced. As Liam said, there's the digital publishing interest group, which is to provide uh, requirements for uh, other working groups, to provide a forum for electronic journals, magazines, news, book publishing, um, authors, creators, publishers, news organizations, etc., cetera, which, which, is, which is very good. But as Liam also said, they're currently focusing on publishers. In email, I was told they're currently getting uh, more publishers to join. The blog post from the interest group following their face-to-face -face at CPAC last year is that for the minute they've looked at their resources and set aside journals, magazines, poetry, children's picture books, comics, and manga. So a large part of what was there um, has been deferred. Uh, just two weeks ago, the question of what they should do about metadata, if they, instead of expanding it to library things, they looked at their resources and said, let's, let's do it amongst us publishers. The interest group has divided its work into multiple task forces. And the one that's the most interest to this formatting discussion is the Latin requirements, which um, is under active development. There's a guy called Dave Kramer from Hachette who's working on this. Um, he takes comments and requests. And it has a, sec a section on drop capitals. It, it doesn't go into the level of detail of some of the books from 1948 or 1986. But I don't think we, we have the, I, I think he has so many other topics to do that spending that much time on just drop capitals would be sort of polishing the, ca the cannonballs or, or bike shedding and um, perhaps in modern standards terms. So the, the purpose of the digital publishing interest group is to produce notes which will be input to other uh, working groups, specifically for the layout, the CSS working group. I tried to find in the um, CSS pantheon of uh, standards and drafts where the, the actual sort of hint about doing the drop capitals would be. I, I couldn't find it. The, standard that relates mostly to other aspects of pagination is the generated content for page media module, which covers things like headers and footers, etc. It sort of had a, a slow gestation. And in September last year, the CSS working group decided to split that into uh, a GCPM with some sections of it, and to put something else, the rest of it, into another spec called floats under the same author, um, and then 
this, this was done, a new editor's draft was made. And then the next week, that author took his specs to the what WG, and they became the books and figures drafts over there as living standards, or in one case, a soon-to-be living standard. And since then, Dave Kramer, the author of the Latin Rec, is now also the editor for the uh, CSS version of the GCPM. So we have we have potentially uh, dueling or incompatible specifications from this, the uh, W3C and the what WG about pagination as well. So I talked before about uh, vendors and participation and resources. So you might be forgiven to thinking this is a slide from the FO side of things that I put in the wrong place, but this is a discussion from another CSS face-to-face -face about um, vendors and implementation, specifically about the, the pagination and the formatters. Um, things like we don't have direct access to the implementers the lack of participation by the vendors is making it difficult. So the, the vendors of the pagination products that paginate CSS are similarly not participating in the CSS uh, working group. It's, if anything, easier there because everything in the CSS is public, so you don't need to be a member to access the, um, the stuff. Another thing I'll point out if you think if you're on about XSLFO can sort of take back the ground from CSS, from CSS, the W3C has put CSS as part of the open web platform. And rather than discussing technologies, they're putting out a questionnaire saying, how do you feel about when you use CSS? Not is CSS the best thing for the job? That's, take, that's um, not a question that's asked. It's, what, what should we evoke from our audience? Should they be excited to use CSS? Um, so, but I'm about to run out of time. These, these lines here are taken from a presentation by one of the uh, inventors of CSS from a Paris workshop from the W3C. His view is it's not possible at this point to make books with standard CSS. It's not at the level of XSLFO. Um, and adding this is going to take time. But with the CSS process and their levels and, as I've seen, as I've shown, the amount of participation they have, they have a better chance of doing it than an XSLFO effort does. Uh, Dave Kramer, again, he has this wish list of things that, before he joined all these working groups, he wanted to see. And many of those sound like things you could do with um, FO and XSLT, but people are looking for them in the CSS context. So I need to finish. I don't, don't really have a conclusion slide. So um, thank you for your time. Right. Uh, we got time for any questions. Anybody have any questions for Tony? Did I hear you say you have a conclusion slide? May oh no, I said I don't have it. Well, no. I, I I just got curious. Oh, the last. Oh, I have some more slides. <laughs> well, yeah, CSS. And what's and what's the, a Lucky? Who says that? That's from the, the CSS charter again. I forgot I had these slides. CSS at this point has more properties than XSLFO does. Um, and the, the last content I had was uh, something came up on the WW style thing about HTML. The CSS people are um, strong about elements who want to model only the elements, but at the same time, HTML is sometimes just a placeholder for pouring in stuff from JSON. So. No, I don't really have a conclusion. <laughs> <laughs>
Any other questions? Right, thank you, Tony.